Welcome to another awesome video. This is an early 2000s Sony boombox. It does a lot of things like play CDs, play radio tapes, even MP3s on CD, which was big back in the 2000s era. But you know what it doesn't do? Bluetooth. That's right, it doesn't do Bluetooth. And in this video, we are going to open it up and do some hacking and add Bluetooth to this boombox. Let's go. Let's do it. As we've shown in a previous video, you can get Bluetooth receiver boards for as little as $2 from Amazon. They're cheap, and in most situations, you don't even need to do any soldering or wiring. You just simply connect an old micro USB cell phone charger and an RCA adapter cable to add Bluetooth to your favorite old stereo receiver or boombox using its tape or auxiliary input. But what if your boombox doesn't have an auxiliary input? Like, for example, this Sony. Well, today, in this video, we're just going to open it up and see if we can find a place inside to inject this signal from the Bluetooth board. Normally I wouldn't advocate tearing up a classic boombox, but this thing, even though it's 20 years old, is not really classic compared to the 80s boombox. People aren't interested in those. You know, it's not as aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it started to yellow a little bit. Uh, the gray color has changed. But if I can add Bluetooth, everything works and it sounds pretty good. So if I can add Bluetooth, that'll make it more useful and maybe I can pass it along to somebody who can get more use out of it. A quick disclaimer before we get started on this project, I'm a hobbyist, not a professional. So consider this video entertainment purposes only. I think I actually got this. This is probably like $120 when it first came out. I got it for like $30 at, at a Target clearance display model sale because the antenna is missing. But you can still pick up plenty of local strong local stations and of course you got mp3 and tape and all the other stuff ah, it looks like the speakers and the control controls are on there maybe they unplug or something 2.3 watt speaker 3.2 ohms there's some more stuff in the back or something Oh, now I can see the tape deck belts and the inside's pretty good. Maybe I can get the. So as usual, I'm just tearing into things here and you're really supposed to take out that middle section before you take out the uh, display and stuff, which I'm about to discover. It looks like this middle piece here comes off. I would take off these screws and some screws here in the back. I might really get the top off. I just had to disconnect the power cord here. I'm going to try to leave the tuner cable in place, and I think the whole thing will just lift out together. Yeah, I'm going to get this, this handle out because I think that's... Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, let's just take a look at what we got here. Yeah, okay. So here we have sort of the main board with the amplifiers at the back, and there's two more screws holding that in, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off. There might actually be a way to... to make the firmware recognize an auxiliary input if there were versions of this boombox sold with one, but I don't know. What I'll probably end up doing is tapping into the tape deck, which on, on most boomboxes, the boombox is off until the tape deck is on and that powers up the amplifier, but this one has a power switch separate from the tape deck mechanism, so in theory I could just inject the signal and just remember not to play a tape at the same time as Bluetooth, that would work. So, and I have not even checked the internet. There, this being from 2001, there might actually be a service manual out there for this. Maybe I'll stop the video and go look for that right now. Turns out the service manual was available online for free at Hi-Fi Engine. It's got a lot of useful information. You know, the way the line output signals are and uh, definitely some identified regulation, the pinout of this tape connector. So I think uh, this is going to be even easier than expected. Unfortunately, those are famous last words. It actually wasn't as easy as I expected. We had a couple of snags, uh, which we got around, which we're about to run into. And I've got this old computer sound card cable, which has a nice, uh, nice small wires all bundled together. I'm going to try to connect that to the solder pads here on the chip. Do that. Then after we get that working, we'll try to hook up the five volts. Normally I would do this sort of in a semi-running state, but in order to get this thing to play, I'm going to have to reconnect, you know, all this ribbon cables and stuff. So I think I'm going to go for it based on the schematics. And then before I put it completely back together, I will test it. So we're going to hook it up uh, in whatever disassembled state and see if we can get this thing to make some noise over the Bluetooth just using uh, other power. Okay, so everything's working. But the problem is, unless the tape is engaged, it's very quiet. So right now, the tape has stopped, but the amplifier is on. So if I go to maximum volume, you can hear it. It's just going to be very quiet. 
So it's on. But the act of engaging the tank mechanism must unmute something. So we either need to remember to press play or not. And of course the tape is not broken. It still works. If I plug the Bluetooth adapter back in. Interesting. It overrides the tape deck. So yeah. Yeah, I guess it's outputting a, a stronger signal there. Interesting. So a little bit more hacking will be required with this DPDT switch double pole double throw. So what I'm going to do when you turn it on, it'll activate the Bluetooth power, the Bluetooth board's power. I'm going to still have to get five volts from somewhere. And it will also activate the play switch, which is in the tape deck. I think it comes to a couple of these wires. So I'll have it just Activate play and activate the um, Bluetooth thing. That way, when you want to use tape, you turn it off and the tape can be loud. When you want to use Bluetooth, you don't have to hit play. It'll just power up the Bluetooth board and do that. I'm going to try that. I'll just drill a hole in the back. So that will sit on there with the switch in place. So that's going to work out fine. I still have to uh, route all the wires down the bottom and wire it up, but that's going to work for the switch. One wire on the switch goes over here to the play switch, and that's going to activate that. The other one fits neatly in the slot that was already there for these wires, and it's going to go down there, and we just have to wire up the power. I decided just to use an old uh, USB, micro USB uh, connector cord, because it was just so much easier to solder to solder into that. So I've got the switch positive power. I'm going to ground the negative. Then this thing will be powered uh, by the boom box itself, and we should be able to put it all back together. I'm going to do one more test to make sure everything works. Okay, it's working, but we got a problem. Some noise is being introduced. It's obviously Bluetooth radio noise. If I cut out the Bluetooth, it goes away. As it turns out, putting a capacitor across the power pins on the Bluetooth adapter helps a little, but does not completely eliminate the noise. Finally got it working. Now you hear nothing but the hiss of the amplifier. And music, of course. All the Bluetooth noise is gone thanks to the addition of this little chip. The DC-DC converter takes uh, the 5 volts and passes out 5 volts, but it isolates it somehow, which removes all the Bluetooth noise. Uh, and that was the fix. So uh, that ends this project. We just got to put this thing back together. Okay, so now we're listening to the radio and we want to do Bluetooth, so it's very simple. We just flip the switch in the back. It'll automatically set the tape for you and activate the Bluetooth adapter. Then you grab your phone and connect. Just a matter of playing some music. Yep. And on the back we've got everything labeled with the uh, where you need to connect and the switch. And of course you can leave the Bluetooth adapter on and flip back over to the radio and back if you want to. So that's about it for this project and this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and subscribe if you like other old technology projects. Um, just to recap, this started off as a seemingly easy project where we just had to find a place to put an audio signal and voltage, but then we had to also figure out the muting issue and add the DC to DC converter to eliminate the Bluetooth noise. But that's about it. We'll see you next time for another awesome video.